uh, quite easily. You can also go to the 3D library and select from their content. And they have all this animated content and they have still content. So if I wanted a dancing skeleton, for example, or, or just to move them around a little bit and, and study these effects, it has a certain appeal to emotional intelligence to be able to do this and to zoom in on this content. And of course, where are we getting some of this? Well, there's a lot of built-in content. And then of course, I was demonstrating that I was getting it from uh, this online site called Sketchfab. And I could ask for anatomy and then I could say downloadable. And then I could say, what kinds of Creative Commons licenses am I interested in? And some of them are, are shareware or free and some is for money, right? And of course, the one thing I was talking about was this one here is worth every penny at $199 because it would take a lot more of my time to build this than $199. <laughs> and it's because it splits into pieces, right? It's going to split here. And I'll just freeze that for a moment. It's animated, so the organs are beating. And I can rip apart all these pieces and showcase them in different lessons or, you know, so this is really rather breathtaking. I know it may look gruesome, but for an anatomy class, this is very powerful stuff. And to have this floating with the student where they could observe it, they could take a photo of themselves, you know, observing this stuff. Um, let me show you the video controls. So we have the photo, like I could take a photo with this guy. He's not very bright and cheery. So let's pick a different one, right? Um, Let's pick the dog. I've never done the dog. Oh, there we go. It's a little dark here because I have skylights everywhere, right? Above me, I have two above me and, and three or four to the left. But <laughs> anyway, so here we have the dog. And I could create a little video of the dog. Here's a video of the dog, me talking. Hey, hi. It's great. Bye. <laughs> and, and I could uh, save that or do something with it. I just have to click right here. And it will bring up the other software. Oh, it, I hear it playing. Okay. And then I could edit and create, you know, I could do various things to it. I could add some effects. I can certainly save it. Um, and I can add captions. They just have all these different, um, let's say we we're going to save it. Oh. Of course, using multiple software tools all at the same time might not be your cup of tea, right? But, um, and then of course, uh, where did I get that? Hmm. Earlier when I click things, maybe I um, added to an album. Oh, I, I said with music, okay, example. We'll just call it example, right? It's gonna bring up all this stuff and then uh, where did I view the video? Okay, then in here I can add captions. I can do more stuff. I get all these tools. It may not look like it, but there's a lot of tools here. 3D effects, some motion. I could add some text. I could select my caption style for accessibility. I could decide if they're going to be up or down or to the right or left. I love these kinds of controls because sometimes you don't want the caption on top of your content, right? And then when you start typing it out, it will create the areas that are the zones for each of the lines. You just put all your captions here at the top and it just, it just does it. It's really, really handy. Yep. And then if you want photos, you just click on here and you take a photo. And so then you have a photo demo, right? Um, and there's other tools too and other stuff you can do, but this, for a free little tool, this is very powerful. Now, when you're not in mixed reality, you can do other things too, right? And you can, of course, color your work, you know, make some minor modifications to it. You can adjust the lighting and the environment. And of course, you have some features here, but this is, this is freeware, shareware, um, designed uh, a very powerful little setting. And I'm sure there's probably a Mac equivalent. It's just, I don't own a Mac, you know? <laughs> anyway, I think it's cute, but you know, I don't have to be looking at him. I could be looking at one of my other videos as well, one of my other AR content. Um, any other questions? I'm so sorry you could not hear me. How rude, right? That's okay. Um, you were walking through those slides of yours. Um, was that about yeah, the, the, the ones project? for our session? Yeah. 
this is um all i was saying was that we uh, this is the unity screen for how we bring in the virtual environment or the oculus environment some of these are oculus environments from alcove or other tools mm -hmm. some are our environments and then we're mapping our objects into these environments so so we have a multi-dimensional approach one is to customize how we move so people aren't getting sick um one is whether we're going for realism right with virtual content like these this is alcove or whether we're looking at this is virtual harmony, right? Our scenes instead of their scenes, as we think of this. Then we think about, see right now, getting the scripts to work in Oculus from a virtual world is a little different because it would have to be able to interpret them, right? It would have to understand their behavior. They're, they're not compiled code, that's an interpreter. So, <laughs> so of course we have to think about that. But here's where we're mimicking the sound controls and also bringing in the radio station that we created. The, our, our, we have a jazz station that we run uh, with also some of our, our music. And anyway, and then various um, sounds. So we're just testing those out. So we introduce these little objects we've created. Then we've, we've created our own controllers and our own hands. And so we're testing those out as well. And then the last thing was the thing he had just sent to me, which um, I don't know where that went. Let me look. Got a lot of things open, right? Um, looking, looking. Here it is. It's an it's an email. Uh, what he did here is he has um, customized where its location, some of the movement, and also uh, he's treating these like stations. So he has this text visible. And getting that visible and comfortable for people in a virtual world, virtual reality, excuse me, is a little different. So this is our virtual world content in virtual reality with these labels above them so people know what they're looking at. Yeah, but that's not the same as floating text in, in the virtual world. Does that explain it? <laughs> yep. I love the doggy too, Mary. It's so good to see you. I mean, is, you're, is you, you like should be all about this. Be, I, don't, I don't know if you use a Mac in the classroom, but 3D Viewer is so easy to use. And, it, and Sketchlab is the world's largest collection of 3D content. And there's a lot of free content on here. So like if you were going for whatever your subject was, let's say um, you're going for nature or whatever. Oops. I must be in some strange mode. I'm not getting it. There we go. <laughs> I wasn't seeing the update. Um, then you would start picking from these to design what, whatever lesson you're looking at. And of course, you don't have to look at a single piece of content. You don't have to look at things for pay. Although I, I don't mind compensating people, as many of you know, I, I believe. And some of these are students' projects. And so the, the, uh, the one with the musculature that I demoed, that was a student project, which is why I grabbed it, because uh, I thought that was just too cool, right? Um, and of course, then she links all the things from her student work. And you can tell if they're for money or not. They'll have a dollar sign in the corner. This one does not. But it may not be downloadable. Some of them are and some are not. So you just check. It's a beautiful low-poly 3D model. And... See, if it's downloadable, you'll get a little link over here that you just grab it. If it isn't, that might be because they and they have a collaborative share on the content, right? It may not be all their content, which is why when I normally search, I always click on the downloadable button so I screen what I'm looking at. But it's very cool. You can look at others' related work. So it's a great way for people to showcase their 3D objects too. So if you're creating 3D, this is a great place for you to upload and curate your work, right? Yeah, well, see, and I love that, Beth, because I love the fact that I, I, I preferentially, I will show student work because I'll say, look at the cool things they did. They did make a mistake. Um, when you go to that female avatar, and she doesn't call it female avatar. Let me go see what she calls it. Um, let's see, I think I had a reference for it in my slides. Yes, I did. Here it is. Um, she made a mistake on one of the links for the musculature. No, this is not it. Uh, she's the other version. This is the paid version. Hers is the one with the numbered parts, you know. 
uh, I'm searching in the wrong field, of course. That's what happens when you're, you have not had coffee, you know, and you're not a morning person and you're up all night. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but anyway, in this list, we will see it. Let's see, it's a female, um, let me say female, it's full body and it has the musculature. Let's see. It's so funny that I'm not popping it up. It's an upright and it has a, one half of it has the, um, here it is. So this is the student work. And of course the, she has little links down below and the comments is how I detected that she was a little off because someone um, started correcting, you know, what she called the different muscles. <laughs> There's always one, right? And I love this though, because I love the community review because this is when learning happens is when we make mistakes and we feel a little uncomfortable and then people may help us, help us correct them, right? And so I actually tell my students, I don't deduct for this kind of thing. I actually think of this as a learning opportunity with a better memory trigger. Um, simple tools, you know, for the Mac users, uh, Cheetah is what, um, Cheetah 3D is what my um, research counterpart uses, Andy Stricker. So we'll say we need an airplane crash that emulates one of the United Airlines airplanes so we can talk about crew co communications. And two days later, he'll have a full plane model of that exact model, you know, uh, with the internals and the externals in mesh, you know, <laughs> and he does it with a Cheetah 3D, which is really fast. And I think that's like $99. Uh, it's not as complex as Blender 3D. Blender 3D, um, the the 3.0 version, you know, it came out in December, is a lot more powerful than any prior version. It also has a few usability features. And there's some really cool videos now on the workflow for it to make it a lot easier for people like us who don't sit around and do 3D, right? Um, oh, Eon Reality that I'm using, let me show you this. That makes it very easy because you can go from a photo, right, to, <laughs> or you can use a 3D scanner, like, or a 3D camera to capture the content and then clean it up, right? Anyway, this is Eon 3D, uh, Eon Reality. And of course, the goal here is not just to have a model, but to split it up and then to be able to create audio, video, or text based markers that explain what this content is doing. And I have an account in here. Uh, this is not free and it's not necessarily cheap. Uh, luckily my university is providing it for me so that I can create apps for them, right? And what this will do is you create the content. You can, you can actually flag it and label it in your mobile device on your mobile phone. And then uh, you save it in your library and then you bring it into Oculus. They have an Eon Oculus app, and then your class can use it there. Yep. But my goal is, wouldn't it be nice if we don't have to have headsets and all this other technology, if we have these open source tools that people can easily use? And see, that's, that's the cool thing here, is being able to tailor content, you know, or um, introduce it in things like um, 3D Viewer, which is what this is. And remember, you go to mixed reality quite easily. And it's, hello. And you just grab your little guy. You click on him once or twice. Sometimes I'll do it twice. Um, I guess it depends on how hard I'm clicking. And then you can move him around. You can scroll him in. And you can see different aspects of him. In Eon Reality, if I brought it in, I could break him apart and study you know, the internals of his design. When we design 3D content, we often don't render the inside or the backside or the surfaces that are not observable. That way you're not paying for that mesh in performance, you know, you're, it's not lagging you. So that's not always appropriate with every model. And then there's a lot of still models as well. The only reason I'm going to the animated ones is I find them fascinating, right? And of course, this, this whole story all began with the bee you know, which is really pretty dramatic, you know, a lot of movement, a lot going on. Okay, any last thoughts? I don't mean to bore everyone or keep you. <laughs> Anything else you want to see?
I know that um, a sidearm was asking what you had any thoughts on. What was that sidearm? I'm scrolling up, but I don't see. He said, just start over. Oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You did start over. You Thank did God, it. You right? did great. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you, you were asking about tools to. sidearm too. So I don't know. And if you, you can create video, click on this button. You can go in and edit your video. You can caption it. You can do whatever. And then I just uploaded it to YouTube very quickly. But uh, and if you don't do well, you just delete it and do it again. You go, oh, my gosh, my hair. <laughs> no big, right? But, um, yeah. And then, of course, um, you don't have to be in that mode. But I think there's an emotional intelligence kind of feeling when, you, when, you're, when you're seeing all this content and you're interacting directly with it. And there's a lot of imaginative content in here. And I think you can download more. The community is constantly creating more of it. It's like, here's a space person. Yeah. And it's not this dark normally. I had darkened my camera a little bit because I had too much light coming in. It was, it was just all white spots. And now things are getting darker. I'm in the, the land of snow, right? <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, I just love this. And of course he will move and do things, you know. Um, and you can take these models, I suppose, out of here and do more with them and then bring them back in. So you just credit the, uh, so here's SF and fantasy. You have a pretty rich li little library. I'm running out of time. Um, the, 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 this is a free Zoom and a free free segment. <laughs> so we're, we're losing it in like um, 10 seconds. Bye everyone. Have a good one, right? Remember, Zoom for free is 40 minutes for a population up to like 99 people. Have fun and have a great weekend. See you online.